Monsieur Weinberg, est-ce que vous avez un commentaire à faire? It was a sight thousands of pensioners and investors had been hoping for. The high-profile arrests of high-flying Montreal executives charged with orchestrating a massive fraud after taking their money and hiding it offshore. Ronald Weinberg, a TV production executive. The Crown says he's a central figure in the alleged crime. Investment advisor John Zantudakis. The hedge fund manager allegedly investing the stolen money. And the reputed ringleader, Lino Matteo. The suspects had been found, but hundreds of millions of dollars were missing. So, where was the money? That's a question that still haunts Catherine McDonald and her husband Jean-Claude. Together, they invested $500,000. It vanished. Just like Janet Watson, who trusted their financial expertise to build for her retirement, her investment, long gone. Catherine and Janet now carry their nightmare in their bankers' boxes. Cheated out of their savings, they've become warriors for justice. No, our personalities are yeah. very much the same. Yeah, we're, we I think we're fighters. fighters. Yeah, we're fighters. We're not, we don't like to see ourselves as victims. And I think the fight, as uh, Catherine said many times, the fight was our way of handling it, you know, rather than just mm -hmm. uh, give up. And Maybe we were getting 1% more, but it wasn't, it, wasn't it was an outrageous. Like so many others, they put their money in what they were told were respectable companies. And the financial statements were public. You yes. could, you, and they were all showing profitability. North Shield, run by John Zantudakis, and Mount Real, run by Lino Matteo. Even some older people didn't tell their children. They didn't oh, yeah. want anybody to know. They were so ashamed. Yeah. That, that they'd been wiped out financially? Yes. Yeah. Because they were at a certain age where this money would go on to their children or their grandchildren. And here they'd lost it all. Do you believe to this day that these characters have money stashed away, some of your money stashed away somewhere out there. Yes. Yes. Matteo is too smart not to have mm -hmm. a plan B. Every day when you're walking down the street. Their nightmare began in the most unlikely of places. What parent of the 1990s can forget Arthur? Healthy programming teaching your kids how to be honest and kind. Welcome to Sinar, where we open doors to imagination. Arthur was produced by the animation studio Sinar, along with other classics like Caillou and the adventures of Paddington Bear. Weinberg was co-CEO of the company dubbed Disney of the North. But Sinar's make-believe world got very real after an internal audit in 2000 revealed Weinberg transferred $120 million of company money to the Bahamas without telling its board of directors. I had one very, very simple question. Where's the money? Lawyers Bill Brock and Kara Cameron were hired by Sinar's board to find the company's money. I was sent down to find the money and little did I know that this would occupy the next 10 years of my professional life. The paper trail showed Weinberg moved Sinar's money to a North Shield affiliate in Nassau, and from there it would be moved again and again. We did litigation in England, New York, Florida, Bahamas, Anguilla. And I was talking to lawyers from you know, th three or four countries a day mm. who were trying to get after these things. As the Sinar fraud made headlines, Catherine worried. Her investments were with that same financial group, Northshield. When the board of directors of Sinar found out, they wanted the money back. I was reading this in the newspaper and I was thinking, well, what money is going to pay them back? Is it my money? I'm invested in Northshield too. Are, are alarm bells going off for you at this oh, point? Oh, very much so. Very, very much so. It was panic right at the beginning and then it was incredible anger. Just, I was just furious, and I got angrier as time went on, and the injustice of the whole thing. Janet Watson decided to do her own investigation in her hunt for her money. She demanded a meeting with Lino Matteo at this restaurant in Montreal and asked for her money back. I thought he was a thug, 
And if I had ever met him in person, I would never have put a single cent into any of his companies. Janet and Catherine both started digging into Mateo's Mount Real business in ways their own financial advisors never did. This is the head office of Mount Real. That's the head office? Yeah. It was operating out of a uh, duplex with several addresses, actually. So I think it was down here in these boarded up windows. I took this picture. So. That kind of says it all, doesn't it? It does. With investors, creditors, and lawyers looking for the North Shield Sinar money, the evidence shows Lino Mateo was brought in to help keep it hidden. Mateo was hatching a plan. A situation that could get nasty, he wrote, but is in a sunny climate. It was the beginning of a scheme to hide investors' money that would last more than four years. So over time, we found out that, yes, we were being fed a stream of lies. In June 2005, Norshield was shut down by the courts. That month, Lino Matteo wrote an email plotting to transfer millions to another secret offshore company. The shares need to be moved, Matteo wrote, and fast. Their intentions were clear from this response, so the liquidators cannot get it. Lino Matteo would be convicted for his role in this fraud. Out on parole, he agreed to speak to the Fifth Estate. And a lot of people who, who feel angry that their money was lost, money that, that represented their future is gone. Is that something that weighs on you when you think about those people and, and the money that was lost? No one likes to lose money. That, that's very clear. No one reads what the risks are when they're reading the risk document because they think it doesn't apply to them. Mm -hmm. Um, so, sure, it's unfortunate. Here's what I'm going to say, okay? Anyone that lost money is absolutely entitled to be upset. And they are. And they're absolutely entitled to be upset. And you've heard it. Could I finish, please? Mm. Okay. This is the first time I'm going to say this on the record. No one lost more money than me and my family. This is what and despite his fraud conviction, he won't admit he's guilty of anything. I'm not telling you that there wasn't any fraud by some other parties, but if you want to look at what my involvement was mm -hmm. in putting together a working paper file, I believe there was no fraud intended. And my understanding, if there is no intent, there isn't a crime, mm -hmm. okay? These investors who feel that there's still money out there somewhere. Of course there's money out there somewhere. As I said before, and there's a there's a debit and a credit. So if someone, when, when the money left the company, someone got the money. So w where is that money? Well, it's gone now, it's dissipated. But was the investor's money gone or hidden and still out there? Court documents from liquidators and civil lawsuits note, assets diverted by the hundreds of millions, unauthorized transfers offshore, allegations of fraud and forgery. In all, more than half a billion dollars unaccounted for. The money had vanished. It wasn't just mom and pop investors who wanted their money back. Relatives and associates of the Rizzuto crime family had lost $5 million in North Shield. Enforcers barged into a meeting with Lino Mateo's co-conspirator, John Zantudakis, in this office building and beat him badly, demanding their money back. Hello. An RCMP wiretap recorded this cell phone conversation with a former partner of Zantudakis. The guy that deserved that, you know, between me and you, the guy that deserved that was fucking Lino Matteo. Trust me. He didn't show his fucking face, the fucking weasel that he is. Okay? He is the guy who deserved it. There's people that want to beat me up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? And Janet and Catherine were starting to understand how things work. I, you know, why do small investors not get their money back? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're standing in line to get your money back and you're a big institution like a bank or you're the mafia and then there's the small investor, who are you going to pay back first? But even Bill Brock and Kara Cameron couldn't get all of Sinar's money back. They traced millions to the Barrington Bank in the Bahamas but were blocked from getting at the accounts. 
we were looking for justice for our clients and we were trying to deploy all legal means that we could in order to achieve those ends. After recovering most of Sinar's millions, Brock and Cameron settled with Weinberg out of court. It's done, done deal. Can we talk to you? Their colleague Wes Voorhees still struggles with it. Millions were still missing. So I do this work because I hate these guys and I don't like these guys. Tell the truth, pay your taxes, abide by the law, do what the rest of us do. These guys don't do that. Coming up, we join the hunt in search of the missing millions. Okay. Well, where did the money go? Who are you protecting, Mr. Mankoff? It was a ray of hope for the victims of one of the biggest frauds in Canadian history. That arrest of the three co-conspirators. John Zantudakis, charged after reportedly stepping off a plane from Bermuda. Lino Matteo, arrested in Montreal. And a tanned Ronald Weinberg, charged as he returned from a Caribbean holiday. <laughs> Catherine McDonald would have liked a sunny vacation too, but her life savings were gone. The only trip she was taking was a bus ride to their criminal trial. Catherine, why, what, why was it so important for you to be in that room? Well, <laughs> it was my way of dealing with our loss and also to represent the victims. Because as far as the court sees, victims are names and numbers on pages of paper. But we wanted to put a face to the victims of these frauds. What prosecutors Matthew Ferguson and Céline Bilodeau didn't know at the outset? This would be the longest jury trial in Canadian history. Who are the victims in this story as you're watching it play out? Um, it's incalculable, the number of victims here. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. When I accuse somebody, it's because I'm sure is guilty. Okay. And you were sure from the beginning that they were guilty? Oh, yes. Yes. Week after week, Catherine and Janet Watson would show up and come face to face with the man they believe made off with their money, Lino Matteo. We, we wanted him to go to jail for something. Uh, we were just happy they were, they were going to court. I mean, something was finally being done. Two years after it began, the verdicts? Guilty, guilty, guilty. Proving the fraud was one thing, Finding the money that belonged to investors like Janet and Catherine was another. And when it came to that, mm -hmm. and, and finally when you get a, a you know, certainly a conviction of this, the, the question was still, where's the money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's something, it's a question that I still ask myself, is, is what happened uh, to the rest of it? And where is the rest of it? So where was the money? Our search for clues took us here, to the Isle of Man, a tiny crown dependency off the Irish Sea. In ancient times, these castle walls used to keep out foreign invaders. Now the island attracts foreign accounting firms and their clients, offering confidentiality in their financial affairs. And it was here we found some clues that cracked the secrecy of these castle walls. Companies naming people linked to Canada. They were called Qatar, Shax, Spatha, and Shashqua, all named after ancient swords and daggers. We noticed all four sword companies were set up exactly at the beginning of the Sinar North Shield fraud, and three of the four were shut down exactly when that fraud was finally exposed. So, could that just be a coincidence? So, I suspect you're onto something, but I can't, I'm not in a position to confirm or any further. Mm -hmm. When we asked Lino Matteo, he alluded to knowing something, he just wouldn't say what. If I can get my hands on something more concrete, maybe we'll have another conversation one day. But right now, no, I'm not prepared to speculate. This is, this was when, so we took uh, those sword company documents to Wes Voorhees. Uh, I learned over the years dealing with these situations that in, when people commit fraud, um, they almost always uh, have money hidden somewhere in the world. Um, Warhees was hired to find Sinar's missing money. If I had got this information, we had got this information while we were st still on the scene, we would have tried to get to the bottom of this. Um, the timing is too coincidental to be um, 
uh, just a coincidence. Tax professor Marwa Rizki studied the documents as well. She too believes they must be linked to the Sinar Northshield fraud. The creation date are the same, and the liquidation date is also the same, so it has to be linked. So who helps set up those Isle of Man shell companies? I've got uh, as many calls on this issue as I have on any other because uh, I think Canadians are, uh, are quite frustrated. In Ottawa in 2016, the House of Commons Finance Committee was looking into the Isle of Man and an offshore tax scheme for the rich set up by the accounting firm KPMG Canada, where this document surfaced. KPMG advertising to wealthy Canadians a product they designed using the Isle of Man that would protect their money from creditors. There was nothing a creditor ex-spouse can claim. The KPMG scheme is to help uh, multi-millionaire, billionaires. Rizki is also a Liberal member of Quebec's National Assembly. She says that kind of confidentiality offered by KPMG could be ripe for abuse. This is why it's very, very good for people who wants to get away with, uh, with their tax problem, with the creditor's problem. There's no way we can find it. Unless there's, a, of course, a, a, a leak. <laughs> The Finance Committee never did find out the names of those companies set up by KPMG in the Isle of Man or the wealthy Canadians behind them. The Liberal MPs on the committee shut down the probe after KPMG complained it would interfere with ongoing tax court cases. One of the biggest ever leaks of offshore secrets. This is the number of documents that would never have seen the light of day. Documents speak for themselves. Well, they are known as the Paradise Papers. Then another clue from the Paradise Papers about those companies we found in the Isle of Man. An email listing all the companies KPMG set up in the Isle of Man for Canadian clients. And there they were, Shashqua, Qatar, Shax and Spatha. The author of the email, an Isle of Man service provider working with the companies set up by KPMG Canada. KPMG is adamant it had no role in setting up the sword companies. They say the author of that email was involved only at an administrative level, her statements contradictory, and she was only expressing a belief the sword companies were linked to KPMG. KPMG says it isn't surprising there are similarities, saying anyone could copy their documents from the public registry. And KPMG adds there are nevertheless important differences between the companies they helped set up and the swords. Oh, in my personal opinion, they are linked. We asked Professor Rizki. She says it's possible the sword companies weren't set up by KPMG Canada, but she doesn't believe in that kind of coincidence. So we have the same uh, service provider, the same articles, we have the same companies involved, the same language. And in three of those sword company documents, we found this name, William Maycock. He knows who was behind the sword companies and where the money went. Maycock is a Canadian-trained accountant based in Bermuda. Our producer, Harvey Cashor, paid him a visit in 2017 while researching this story. The documents show he managed the money in the sword companies on behalf of those unnamed Canadians and transferred the assets when three of the companies were closed down in 2005. Where did the money go? What did you do with the money, Mr. Maycock? I don't know and I don't like your behaviour, okay? Well, where did the money go? I don't appreciate the way you... Who are you protecting, Mr. Maycock? I'm not protecting anyone. Well, who are they? There's a lot of money involved that, was, that went, went missing. A lot of money went missing, Mr. Maycock. For years, investors were let down by the institutions meant to protect them. They're demanding Ottawa do more to help get their money back. And now there's a solid lead, says Wes Warhees. What, what can be done with them to, to, to try to get closer to finding out where that money is? Um, you could start litigation uh, in the Isle of Man, then you go to court and you get a court order. But, uh, but this is a start. This is a start. No, it's a start. And as I said right at the, right at the outset, you got to have a start. Without a start, you got no chance, but you got to start. Oh. If there is any whatsoever political will out there in Ottawa, um, this should have the RCMP reopening the investigation. Uh, they should have the prosecutor, like the best of Canada, working on that case.
Today, Lino Mateo is on parole. In a recent court ruling, a judge said the evidence clearly showed he was transferring money offshore. He was fined $5 million, but hasn't paid it. You haven't paid it. What's your point? Why not? Why not what? Pay the fine. Why don't you pay it? Do you think I have $5 million? Did you, like, come on. I view your question as insulting. Why do you view that as insulting? In fact, we're going to stop. Stop the cameras, please. Why? 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 I'm going to explain once you stop the cameras. Well, you can explain when the cameras are. Okay, then I'm leaving. So we can show that to you? Ronald Weinberg declined to talk to us. He got full parole in 2019. Last year, he made headlines after receiving a COVID relief CERB check. He paid it back. Today, he and his wife own this posh Panama resort. We showed the resort's YouTube video to Janet and Catherine. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Is this supposed to be therapeutic? Because it's not. <laughs> No. I had I had no idea it was And this like is this. now, today. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's your money, Kathy. Yeah, well, I, I feel I have a share in that. Yeah. Thing. Maybe we could get a room. 